Welcome to the Puma Ball. I call it that because I cover it in a Puma sock. Technically, I could call it the Blue Puma Ice if I really wanted to, but that would make me sound like a SoundCloud rapper. We're back today to talk to you guys about more of the games I played while I was a kid. The consoles we're covering today are the Wii, 3DS, DSi, mobile games, and web games. I know we covered PC games in the last video, but web games is exclusively things like cool math games or other websites that you can play games on, things like that, okay? I will brush through a lot of that in the mobile games because obviously I was in the generation of playing lots of these games because they were free, they didn't have ads, you didn't have to pay to play or win, it was a good time. I will touch on the important ones, um, but lightly skim through the rest because you guys probably don't want to hear about that. I'll start off with the interesting ones, so in case any of the web or mobile games bore you guys, you can just skip the rest of the video. We're gonna talk about the Wii. I'm pretty sure most people had a Wii. If you were staying with family at the time, you had a Wii. And if you weren't, you probably had a Wii, but sideways. I've gone through at least three of them. Not sure what happened to the first one, it kind of shit the bed. The second one I got unlocked me to the world of modding, but I didn't know it. Basically, we got a second-hand Wii and it had loads of things like Donkey Kong and Song on it, and I definitely wouldn't have played any of them if it wasn't for that Wii. I am very grateful. Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort. Of course I had them, why wouldn't I, who didn't? I don't th think you could legally own a Wii unless you owned a Wii Sports game. Resort definitely took a lot more of our time, but we did prefer the original Wii Sports Bowling over the Resort version. Not 100% sure why, I, don't, I think it was just probably the nostalgia to a degree, but definitely spent my time in most of these mini games, but I think the ones I racked up the most time in was the free throw points basketball game any of the wakeboarding ones. The sword fighting one, which I forget the technical term for now, I forget. I used to crush my sibling at, we always tried to tie the third round so that we could get up on the mini platform and then I'd just beat her off into oblivion. And table tennis. Table tennis! I spent way too long on table tennis! My sister still has the high score and I, have, I, still, I still can't beat it. It's a lot. I just- I- I don't know, there's nothing that exciting about table tennis, but we just played a lot of table tennis. Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 are some of my favorite games to this day. When I first started my Twitch channel in June of 2023, those were the games that I started with because for whatever reason as a kid, I never finished either of them. I'm pretty sure the thing was, if I ever reached a level that I didn't enjoy, I didn't like the feel of, the vibe of, the whatever, the mu music was scary, I just never played it. And in both of these games, I'm pretty sure I reached a point where I wouldn't play any of the available levels, so I couldn't get stars, so I couldn't progress, and thus never finish the game. And I have spent so many hours on those two games in the last year trying to complete them, and now trying to 100% them for the second endings. No! What the fuck? It's not that hard! Sorry, Mario, I'm just gonna keep drowning you until we get this. <laughs> and we're gonna go out- Yee! Okay, and then just bang it right- No, down! Go down! Go down! I can't see! I can't- No! I can't fucking see! Oh no! Uh. I don't remember what spot of this race it is. It's not the spot I normally die at, but, you know, that's okay. Right before you get to the edge of the platform. Oh my god! <laughs> this is insane! Oh my god! Yo! It has been mildly exhausting, but an incredible experience. They're some of my favorite game soundtracks to this date. And Nintendo got really creative with the design of these games, the feel of them. There is nothing like the Mario Galaxy games in any of the other Mario games. I think the closest you kind of get maybe now is with Odyssey. I might be missing some other games, but the rest still feel very 2D, 3D platformer. Which is perfectly okay, There's not, I have nothing against that, but I don't know. I just have a soft spot for Mario Galaxy. 
Sean White Snowboarding World Stage isn't a game I can talk to you a lot about. It's snowboarding. What more do you want me to say? Just Dance 2014 and Just Dance 4, I'm not really going to talk a lot about, it's Just Dance. If, if you don't know what the Just Dance series is, it's basically popular music from that point in time, and you dance around frantically, looking absolutely stupid while you do it, trying to get a bigger score than your sister who has just sat on the couch next to you, waving her arm up and down. I killed that. Cars 2 Mater's Tall Tales was an incredible addition to this series of Cars Wii games. Just like the side film, it was basically all of Mater's silly stories turned into mini-games, and it was a really fun game. I know it was one me and my sister played a lot, both together and separately, and I did still really enjoy coming back to it. The whole game is basically a compilation of little games, and I think that's what makes this one so special and different to the rest of them. Cars Mater National Championship was basically some of the minigames from Cars the Wii game with slightly different variations of tracks, minigames, and characters. Not a lot to say about this one, it was kind of like a diluted Cars game. Cars 2 the Wii game kind of took a turn just like Cars 2 the movie. It became mostly about shooting and violence and blowing things up, built into a lot of races as well as minigames. The, the, the goal was basically just to kill each other. Cars the Wii game was one that I played a lot around Christmas, more than any other time of year, I think, and even up until middle school, it came out quite a bit. It's still a lot of fun, and even though it is mostly a single-player game, there were points where we would all watch anyways because of all the hidden sections and easter eggs. There's this huge rock platform that you can go up the secret trail to and make a jump over to, and there's all sorts of hidden collectibles and stuff up there that you wouldn't expect in a lot of games. But it's there, and there's quite a few sections like this. You can tell we played this game a lot, not just because of the progress made in every save file on it, but because of how many sheets of paper have been printed out and stuffed into it with all the cheat codes and directions. I found out that I didn't make as much progress as I thought in this compared to my sister as I hadn't done really any of the tractor tipping minigames, but I don't think I enjoyed them as much because I sucked at them. The steering is kinda janky to be honest, especially as you can't use buttons in this game at all. It's like playing Mario Kart the way Nintendo intended it. That's a sentence to say. The Crude's Prehistoric Path was a game that we played a lot as a family. It's kind of like Mario Party, where you each take turns rolling the dice and landing on different minigames, and then everyone has to play the minigame. Although I did really enjoy this one, I did think it was a lot of fun, and I did absolutely crush my entire family at it consistently. To continue talking about Mario, it would be a huge offense if I didn't talk about New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Alright, this game was a staple to 2D platforming on the Mario series, and I'm pretty sure anyone that's ever played a Mario game definitely played this one. It does follow the feel of most other Mario games, especially the older ones, as you're jumping spot to spot, different levels, um, on different worlds, and you're essentially trying to save Peach from Bowser. Surprise, surprise! <laughs> I do return to this game every once in a while whenever I have friends over, it's normally the Wii game that comes out the most. It's always a really good time, and even after you play it for a while, you definitely pretend that you aren't bored so that you can keep playing. I've just played this game so many times in my life that sometimes I need a break from Mario, but then the next day I'm like, hmm, you know what I could play? Animal Crossing City Folk I didn't actually play a lot. I found out that with a chunk of these games that my sister played way more than I did, so I essentially played on her world. I really do like the concept of this Animal Crossing as it brought in the old familiar graphics of Wild World and a little bit of New Leaf, while bringing in the aspect of a town. You got to travel and visit stores and a cinema and clothing shops and it was really unique to the ones I'd played before as I'd grown up on Wild World before this point, but again it wasn't one I played a lot, I just didn't really feel like Animal Crossing was really built for the Wii, but I know a lot of people enjoyed it and it seemed like a cool enough game, but it just, I don't know, the feel of it didn't really match the console. I much prefer Animal Crossing to be handheld and portable and something I can just sit with a blanket and drink my coffee. This is Editor Tash here, um, 
many, many weeks later. I already talked about Pets Dogs 2 in my other video. If you haven't seen part one of this series, go check it out. Um, but this time I do have to talk about it again because I do own it on the Wii and I am actually going to talk a bit about the game. Whereas last time I don't think I really said a lot, but I will summarize it all for you in case you've never heard of it before. To summarize this game, you play as a dog and you have a friend on the island and you kind of learn the tutorial with them. And after a little while you find out there's a wolf that has been imprisoned in your town who is trying to take over the world, he's super evil, all that jazz. Another thing you find out is that your dad owns a magic hat that keeps the peace in the valley. And one day that hat will become yours because, you know, your dad's gonna die. You and your friend try to meet the wolf because you're children. Um, and you go during the day and the sheriff is like, no, you shouldn't be here, he's evil, he's not safe, get out. So you decide to logically come back at night. And the wolf is like, oh, um, yeah, I am fine. You guys should show me your magic hat. And you're like, yeah, sure, seems legit. So you go get the hat, you bring it back, and he's like, oh, there's a rip on the hat. And you give the hat to him and he takes over the world and every all the animals become angry and... So your goal then is to basically try to save the town, repair everyone's houses, help out in the community because of all the mess you made and everyone seems overly happy to reward you with hundreds of thousands of dollars for helping them even though you are the problem. And then in the end you meet a wizard and his wizard brother and you take down the wolf and that's kind of the whole plot line. There are two spots in this game that genuinely scared me for whatever reason as a kid, and it's the hot and cold lands. So I'm pretty sure one is called Polaris, and I forget the name of the other one. And in these places, you have to make sure that you maintain a body temperature so that you don't die. And the music that plays during these sections, just for whatever reason, scared me. The same as the music that plays at night or in evil areas or whatever. I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. I can't explain it. That's just the way I am. That's just the way I was as a kid. Um, booting these games up again and getting to those sections did irk something in me, and I think that's that childhood trauma coming back to haunt me. But I got through it fine, and it wasn't nearly as bad. It just, whenever you have to jump in a hot spring, it was a real pain in the ass, because for whatever reason, I couldn't get the button to show up to let me in, so I almost died several times trying to save myself because it just, it just wouldn't work. Sim Animals is really, really fun. I will not lie, I actually spent a lot of time playing this by accident. Not quite the same on the DS as it's all 2D, but on the Wii it's entirely 3D and you get to manage and look after all these wild animals, you have to complete these goals to unlock new areas, and you basically create appropriate living habitats for these animals that move in and you can befriend them and get them to do silly things and try not to let them kill each other and it's overall a pretty good game to be honest. I love being able to shove bears in my backpack and take them for a ride. Incredible. Top tier. 9 out of 10. Lego Pirates of the Caribbean, I don't think we re really played a lot. Really didn't get super far. It was a Lego game following the theme of Pirates of the Caribbean. 10 out of 10 for Lego. Lego Harry Potter years 1 through 4, however, we played a lot more of. Not the storyline, but the additional mini-games, where you could create your own levels and play pre-made ones, but we spent most of our time probably just designing our own world or courses and things like that and running over each other with horses. Disney Sing It! Family Hits and Party Hits. It's Disney songs. And you sing it. Madagascar Karts is one me and my younger sister used to play a lot. You will hear this saying a lot because it was pretty much me and my younger sister in all of our gaming, so just assume that from this point onwards. Essentially, it's a racing game with Madagascar characters, and I'm pretty sure there was some others thrown in there too, but I might be thinking of a different game. Happy Feet I didn't play a lot, it was pretty much just a dance game, but to the theme of Happy Feet. How to Train Your Dragon was a really cool one. It obviously follows the plot of How to Train Your Dragon, but you get to fly around and chain dragons and combat stuff and... How... how... how do I... how do I train the dragon? Ratatouille was a goddamn fever dream, alright? I don't care what shit you have to say about the main story. I think it was okay for its time. It was really cool and had a lot of different aspects to it. I did like that it's like part parkour, adventure less about combat stuff because you're a tiny rat. I don't know. I still like this game. I still thought it was fun. 
What tripped me out the most as a kid was the side games. The side parkour mini games with the bright flying fruits that you had to make your way over. This tripped me out so bad. I don't know. There was something not right about these mini games. I don't I don't know what to say. Madagascar 3 was a huge disappointment compared to the first two games. It's 99% parkour and collecting stuff. And then collecting some more stuff. And maybe some more stuff. My favorite part, though, was finding the hidden mort on every map, um, because for whatever reason on my version, when you found mort, and even sometimes while you were approaching him, he would kind of glitch out and stretch in and out, and then when you found him, instead of jumping off the screen, he would f flail around aggressively before disappearing entirely. It was... I want to say it was probably scary, but I found it absolutely hilarious as a kid. Disney Princess Enchanted Journey was one I played quite a bit of. I don't remember if I ever actually finished it, but it was a pretty, pretty cool game. It, obviously, it follows not just one Disney princess, but kind of all of them. You re help them out with tasks that are related to their story and their character as your own mystical princess. You basically become a princess and help other princesses. It's pretty unique in the way that it travels back and forth between all these different stories and different characters and all these different little mini games and missions and mechanics and I kind of only have good things to say about this one from what I remember. I was never really a huge princess kid and I'm still not even though I would go to school in like bright pink fucking sweatpants. If it's your kind of thing it's still kind of cool. Like the graphics weren't even that bad and the plot obviously while being geared towards kids, was still kind of interesting. I think this was definitely one of the better made Disney Wii games. Tangled is kind of in the same boat except you're Rapunzel and Flynn and you follow the story of Tangled. Kind of similar to the last Disney Princess game in that way, but it, you know, it's, it follows some more kick-ass girl and her kick-ass ugly poster boyfriend. Wii music! You make music. Pretty sure I played this game way more than I'd anticipated, but as a kid, we were a pretty big music family, so maybe not so interesting for adults, but as a kid, it was really fun to be able to just flail a re Wii remote and suddenly you could play the trumpet, or the keyboard, or the drums, or anything, at whatever tempo and speed and mismatched beat you wanted to. It was incredible for that. Avatar The Last Airbender The Burning Earth. This is the second Avatar game in a series of three. I'm pretty sure growing up I had this game on the Wii instead of the PlayStation 2, but I can't be 100% sure. I now have it on my Xbox because it was available on the 360. Talking about this game always reminds me of the fact we had the original first Avatar game for the GameCube, thinking it might be a PC game and not actually realizing that it was for a console because n none of us had a GameCube nor did we know what it was. I've seen all of the games floating around in pawn shops and I have looked at getting them on disc again, but the funny thing is, growing up, I watched a lot of DVDs. We didn't have TV, we didn't pay for any subscriptions. With Avatar, we only had the first season and the third season on disc, so it felt oddly fitting that I ended up with the second season as a game to fill in the storyline that I missed. To talk about the actual game, the graphics were pretty good. I'm not 100% sure how much of the graphics now are cleaned up, or if it is still the way it was back when it first came out. Combat is pretty unique, especially as you can switch around between different characters, especially at different points in the game, depending on who is available. Each of these characters have different special attacks and mechanics. Outside of that, it's a lot of collecting stuff, like most kids' games, and parkour and adventuring, following the plot of Avatar. And I thought it was all pretty well done. It was pretty cool, pretty cute, and very nostalgic to return to. Three noteworthy Wii games that I had as a kid that I kind of forgot about until I was making this video were Wally, -E, Bolt, and Epic Mickey. Now, Epic Mickey is the one I want to talk about the most. So, you follow Mickey Mouse as he enters this destroyed magic world of sorts that some wizard guy created, I guess? I'm not 100% sure on the plot there, it's been a while. And your goal is to try to defeat the evil, wipe it away, while repainting the town, quite literally. I honestly wasn't on the internet really as a kid, so I don't know how much hype was around any of the games that existed at the time, but especially now, I am so glad to see that Epic Mickey is being remastered and brought to all consoles. It was a really cool game, really unique, and definitely one of Disney's best. 
and until this project I'd kind of completely forgot about it. I played it quite a bit as a kid, I think it was kind of spooky just because of the dark nature of the design of the game, but I'm so glad to find this now I'm gonna end up put getting it back on my Wii and playing way too much of this. Wally and Bolt I don't have a whole lot to say about, honestly out of the three of these games Wally was probably the worst. There's not a whole lot there. If you consider the concept of the movie there wasn't lots that they could really do with it. You play as Wally which is obviously really cute and you're following the plot of the movie. It's mostly parkour and throwing blocks of trash. Nothing else to say there. Bolt is a little cooler. I know it was one of the underdog Disney movies, but you do actually get to play as both Bolt and Penny as they would in their movies that they were filming. I actually kind of forgot this film existed until I was also doing this project. It was kind of strange, but it had a good plot. It was unique and different to most of the kids' movies, I'll say. Lots of mechanics, lots of different things that you have to do, missions you have to go on, people you have to fight, adventures you explore, I guess. You play between Penny and Bolt depending on the circumstances, and yeah, it's, it was a pretty really funky. The next two consoles we're gonna talk about are the DSi, which is pretty similar to the original DS's, except mine didn't play Game Boy games, and the 3DS XL, in that order. The first game on this list was Spore Creatures, a game that I didn't actually really play. It was a gift from a friend in elementary school. You play as a mutating spore creature and simulate the evolution of that creature's life, I guess? This is probably the second time I've ever opened this game. I'm not going to talk about Flushed Away because I did in my last video, so if you want to hear a little bit about that and how much of a pain in the ass it was, you should go check that out. Pets Cats 2 for the DS, not to be confused with Pets Cats 2 for the console, it's a completely different game. Same font, same style, same box art, different games. This is why I appreciate- I don't know if this was fan art or the Japanese version, I couldn't quite figure it out. This picture here, that I'm gonna put up right here with the magical skills of editing, for Pets, Cats, Slash, Dogs 2 for console, where the game is completely different. My sister played a lot of this game, and I just went around and bugged all her cats for the sake of this video. Pets Bunnies was basically the same thing with rabbits. You care and tend for pet rabbits, but you can also put them in competitions. Mildly unrealistic competitions, but you can do it. The same as you could with Pets Dogs, but except with Pets Dogs it's a little more real to dog competitions. Scribble Knots. Um, I think one PC game I forgot to put on the list, which I played in middle school, was Scribble Knots Unlimited. If I did talk about it, then I'm gonna kick myself for this later. But that was a really cool game. This is the original one, from what I understand. The first Scribble Knots. Basically the same game, but you have less options, less unique responses to the quests. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Scribble Knots, the concept is that you have this little notebook and you can spawn whatever you want with whatever adjectives, effects, things like that, um, to try to solve some sort of question or issue. Um, really unique gameplay. I absolutely love this game. And to prove that this one was easier, I tried one of the hardest bonus levels and spent an hour trying to beat it. And I couldn't do it! So, I really proved a point there. Zoo Tycoon 2 was also available on PC, but I had it on the DSi, and honestly, this is a really good game to take on the go, whether it's on an emulator or on the DS itself. Um, I did have physical footage of this, but upon editing, I've found out that half of it has gone missing, probably because I have to use my phone to record everything, so um, I don't recommend that. Zoo Tycoon is basically a zoo simulator. You are building and managing a zoo. If you're familiar with Roller Coaster Tycoon, same concept. As time goes on, you unlock more animals, furnishings, decorations, buildings, attractions, sites, things like that. The unique thing about this is that you can actually click on each of the animals before you hire staff to do it for you and feed and brush and look after these animals, which I thought was a pretty unique detail. It does make it a lot harder in the beginning. Animal Crossing Wild World was my introduction to all of the Animal Crossing slash Animal Forest games. I could sit here for several hours and trauma dump about how this game related to me in a lot more ways than I could conceive and understand as a child, or I could tell you how fucking annoying it was to return and not only open the game to Rossetti, but also Lyle, who will harass you unless you buy insurance. The whole premise of this game is to make money, um, by stealing all of the land's resources, all of the community's resources, and selling it back to the community to pay off your debt to the community. 
It was actually a real lifesaver when I was a kid as I lived in the middle of nowhere for quite a few years, and I got unnaturally attached to some of the villagers and absolutely heartbroken when they moved away to live in my sister's Wild World games instead. Nintendogs is probably one of the few games that every single person had, whether they played it or not. I am not sure if this is the original copy I had. As a kid, I have several boxes and no games for them, so different games had different breeds of dogs that you could have as pets and look after, and you can train them and go for walks and compete in tournaments and buy them fun toys and treats, and it's overall really cute. It's like having a dog minus the babysitting. My favorite feature was probably the walks, just because of how unique it functioned. You got to draw a little path depending on how well trained your dog was, how fit they were. So newer dogs could only go on short walks, whereas dogs you've had for a long time that you've been training with and looking after can go on longer walks. Um, along the way you can see where your dog has peed, pick up gifts, interact with other dogs, go to the park, um, the store, all sorts of things like that. All things that Nintendogs for the 3DS absolutely ruined. I bought this game secondhand because you could have cats, and I really like the concept of Nintendogs but with cats, just to find that the walk was just like any other dog walk. You just, you walk, you pick up their poop, you go home, and that's it. Yay. New Super Mario Brothers, because I had friends bully me for saying bros in the last video, was one of my most played DS games as a kid. I probably spent more hours playing the mini games than I did the actual games, but it was an incredible game to have as a kid, especially when I had an hour and a half long bus ride two ways from school. My favorite feature of the DS, and even still now, was its wireless feature, where you didn't have to connect to the internet to be able to play with other players. And even if you didn't own a copy of New Super Mario Brothers, like some of my friends on our bus did, you could still play it if so long as one person had the game. It was really cool of Nintendo to not try to money grab and force everyone to have internet and a copy of a game, which I understand now, but back then it was really really helpful especially for young kids because um, it brought a lot of entertainment and a lot of value to it and I I can't express my love enough for this game. New Super Mario Brothers was definitely in the same boat as New Super Mario Brothers Wii. They had the same feel, the same look, the same vibe, but New Super Mario Brothers had mini games. And I fucking love mini games! Growing up, I had three Zenses games. Zen Garden, Rainforest, and Ocean. And I had these as a potential outlet for my anxiety that I developed at the age of eight. A lot of the game options in these actually are really fun, and some of them I still play now every once in a while, just because it is kind of a good reset moment for your brain. It's the only thing you focus on, and it gives you a sort of outlet, whether you pick a relaxing one or one of the timed ones that makes you literally play your butt in stress. If you don't get that, then you're not a gamer. Zoo Hospital really confused me when I went back to play it for this video because I genuinely thought that you're, you play as Bill Nye, and I was super confused as to why you play as Bill Nye, but I found out that it's um just one of the default names that it gives you when you start a game for the first time. I feel like this game gave me a weird vibe just because it's medical related. There's blood, there's stitching, there's pulling fucking spoons out of iguanas. Like, it's not something that I want to do. I think I played it a little bit. Like, I still own it. I couldn't tell you why, but it's on this list. I just realized I completely skipped over Brave. Uh, I don't know if I ever even got footage for that one because it wasn't one I really played. It's basically Brave the movie, but as a game, so it was mostly combat stuff. Kind of like flushed away. Um, I don't, I didn't really touch that game, so that's why I've brushed over it. Animal Crossing New Leaf is probably one of my favorite Animal Crossing games. I do absolutely adore New Horizons, but sometimes it becomes incredibly overwhelming with how many options and how much things you can do in the game. And there's always so much to get done, whereas in the other games, in the older games, you are a lot more limited. And that partially wasn't intentional because you couldn't fit a crap ton in older games, but it was nice because you couldn't sit there and play for hours and it have it end up becoming a chore unless it was weed picking. New Leaf added slight customization options as well as a better plot. You play as the mayor, and this is also the first time Isabel was ever introduced, and everyone loves Isabel, so <laughs> there were so many more things to do in this game compared to Wild World. It was like night and day, even like even compared to City Folk, this game was better. I still play it every once in a while now, especially when someone else is using my copy of New Horizons, so I can't be playing it. This game just has that it has a spot in my home. Plus, this is the last time Rossetti was ever seen before he was wiped because apparently he was too scary. I did have footage of Super Smash Bros. for the 3DS, but it must have been one of the ones that accidentally disappeared during this whole editing process. 
You either know Smash Bros or you don't. This was one I played a lot of, so much that I somehow ended up with two copies of it at one point. Um, a lot of me and friends on the, or the bus when I was a kid would battle each other so much that we never got around to the campaign. Now, I will tell you that I sucked at this game, but it was fun, and it's something that every once in a while I go back to now because it has an addicting feel to it. <laughs> Pokemon X was another one I had footage of before it disappeared. I genuinely thought when going through my videos on here that I still had it, but I guess I didn't. I played Pokemon X way more than any of the Pokemon games I had. While talking about this, I also had Pokemon Sun, but for some reason I don't have it anymore, but I still have the box, so I'm genuinely confused by that. There seems to be a lot of instances like that with my games, but also young child with small cartridges, things are gonna get lost sometimes. Pokemon X had pretty incredible graphics compared to what I'd seen before, which was Game Boy Pokemon games, so having the 3D feel and aspect to it and that, I just, there's something cozy about Pokemon X. Like, way too cozy. I don't generally enjoy Pokemon games anymore because it's incredibly repetitive, but I still like this one. This one was fun. A Pokemon Omega Ruby actually shocked me because for the longest time I was like, oh, Pokemon X is the one I've played the most of. I don't have a lot of progress in it. It looks nicer. I think Pokemon X was the one I got secondhand that already had a completed save file on it, so I played a lot on that and then reset it. Pokemon Omega Ruby, I genuinely played four of my own save files because I got it brand new when it first came out. I was actually genuinely surprised by how much progress I had on this game, considering that I wasn't a huge Pokemon fan. I collected the cards, don't get me wrong. I had like, at least a thousand Pokemon cards, and I only got rid of them a couple months ago. I hadn't completed this game, but I did- I did- I had, like, half- more than half- like, three quarters of it done. I was impressed with myself. Go younger me. That is- that is a goal. Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer was actually one of my favorite DS games, and honestly, games of- maybe not games of all time, but it was kind of up there when you consider the older ones, just because it was so different to all the other Animal Crossing games. You got to design a town, people's houses, you had complete control over their interior and exterior design, and it was the first time we'd ever seen items be placeable outside of buildings. So the closest you got in New Leaf was being able to build like a park bench or a lamp as a construction project on behalf of the town, but it wasn't quite the same. In this, you actually got to put whatever you want wherever you wanted, and it was really cool for that, and I'm thoroughly impressed with how Happy Home Paradise came out for New Horizons as a DLC. If you don't have it and you play New Horizons, you should. It is so worth the extra money. I know it comes with Switch Online expansions, but I don't have that kind of money to spend every year, so I just went and bought the DLC, so I always have it. And they did such a good job of it. The expansion on Home Designer was incredible, especially when you take into account the graphics and what the Switch is now capable of compared to the 3DS. I'm all around in love with both of these games slash DLCs, I guess. Now this is the part you've all been dreading, so we're gonna go talk about web games now. And before you leave, there is one game that I've been trying to remember since literally my childhood, and for some reason none of us can figure it out, none of us can find it, not even a Reddit post could help me. All I remember is that the loading screen took like several decades to process as you were going up through this cartoon vibrant woods towards this house. I don't remember anything you could do in the house, I just know that there was a garden out to the left of it where you could plant these like spotted and stripy colored beans and they grew these weird wacky plants. And for some reason that game is stuck with me and I don't know why, but I can't figure out what it is and I've never been able to find it. So if you could help me, I really appreciate it. If not, you can stay for the rest of this video and if this doesn't interest you, I hope you have a great day. Super D was a game that Actually, when I googled it to try to remember what it was, it came up, like, first try, which I was thoroughly impressed by. You play as a six-sided dice, and there's enemies, there's keys to unlock doors, you have to save other dice along the journey, and at the top you're supposed to fight this big, bad, evil, big D, which doesn't sound quite right, but I know D stands for dice and not di- This title theme music was an absolute bop as a kid, and I don't think I ever actually finished this game, but when you take into account how crunchy the controls are for this, I'm not surprised. It's still up on Newgrounds if you want to go try it for yourself or if you want to return to it. Ragdoll achievement. I don't think I ever actually paid attention to the achievement part of it, just the fact that you could blow a dude up and stab him and shoot him with arrows and really messed up gruesome stuff, but it was really fun. It kind of reminds me of that one Gary's Mod map where it's 
just you'd spawn in some ragdolls and send them through really cruel machines. Or pack the blender with fruit and then crash the entire server. The Papa's games! Now, everyone's played these games, everyone's heard of these games. They are probably one of Flash Drive's most infamous games. As a kid, I definitely tried to have everyone open in different tabs and then play them all at the same time, but upon doing that on Opera, I found out that only one tab is active at a time, so none of the rest were loading. So I had to open them and then just minimize them down so that I could play them all at the same time, and it lagged my computer out so bad, I don't recommend this. The concept of all of these games was that you worked in a restaurant based around whatever the food was that was in the title. You serve customers, and the longer you take, the better score you get, the less tips you get, the slower it is to level up and buy anything for your restaurant. I don't think I've ever finished a single Papa's game, but maybe you have? I don't know. Are you- are you that resilient? Because I'm not. <laughs> Fireboy and Water Girl were games I played all of the time, both by myself and with my sister. This was one of the last games I played before Flash Drive shut down. I think I actually played it several days beforehand without having a single idea that it was about to happen until I tried to go back on a month later and found out everything was gone. So that was a cool time. It's basically a platformer puzzle game where you have to work together with someone else or with your other hand to try to get both characters to their respective doors at the very end. Purple Place was actually not that exciting of a game to return to. It was one that most people my age and around have played. Um, it offers three different mini games, one where you bake a cake, which I played the most, one where you just match puzzle pieces but there's no consequences for how much time you take or if you mess up too much, and a character guessing game where you have to guess what the outfit is using color as the key. There's no music in this game, and I think if it had, had a hefty bop it would have been so much better. Pop the Rubber was one that me and my sister played all of the time. We played every single one. I don't know if there's newer ones out since then, because there's always new games on the internet. The concept is that you try to sneak in, steal the stuff, and sneak out, and it does actually get really difficult really fast. The original Bob the Robber only had up to five or six levels, I think, and by the fourth level, I struggled. If any of you ever read the Spirit Animals books growing up, in the front or the back page there was a code and a web link to the online MMO for Spirit Animals. I know I signed up several accounts for this game and I don't think I ever actually really played very much. The same kind of happened with Disney's Pixie Hollow based off of the Tinkerbell movies, so I actually don't know a lot about the games. I know I probably flew around, interacted with some other fairies, got some quests, that's it. Horse was one my whole family played. We all collected horses on here and that's kind of the whole premise of it, is that you compete and raise 2D horses. There's no animation or anything, it's super simple. Several times a year there's special events for unlocking rare coats or other horses and things like that. One of the really unique things about this when I used to play was that people who played the game could draw up and submit custom coats and they would actually get- some would get accepted. Um, I still have lots of pictures of the ones I drew, and I can see why they never made it. I can't get on my account anymore to show you, as it's been more than 10 years and it has definitely been deleted now. The same kind of situation goes for Dragon Cave, where you just raise and hatch eggs into dragons and then breed more dragons and try to get, I guess, as many breeds as possible. I do still have my account for that, but for some reason I can't get on it because I don't have the email it's attached to, and I don't remember what password I use because there's like 50 variations of one word. Yeah, um, I see why parents kind of take charge of a lot of their kids' stuff. Some other web games I played as a kid was basically anything from Miniclip. I know Snowline was one that even my mom enjoyed playing with us. Every single Duck Life game, because it was Duck Life, and you had to find a way to not do math at elementary school anyways. Bomb It, the original one or two, I think. Um, me and my sister played all the time. There was screaming matches, it was great. Any sort of driving game, jumping game, color game, matching, sushi cat, any piano tiles, BMXing, like, it was the internet. If you saw a game where you could stack cubes, you were gonna play the game where you stacked cubes. The same kind of story goes for mobile games, because back then there was no ads, it wasn't pay to win, and everything was pretty much free. You had an infinite library of games at your disposal, and I'm really glad that I grew up during that period before it became complete trash. It was a huge source of entertainment for me. Now, best for last, mobile games. The first game I'm going to talk about is Pixel Gun 3D. I couldn't tell you why I played this game so much, probably just because it was a Minecraft knockoff. 
but it was pretty fun. Now it kind of has quite a few ads and is just as difficult to play, although I thought I was absolutely killing it until after this round filming for this footage, I found out that I was just playing against CPUs. So that's pretty good. Good Pizza, Great Pizza is honestly a really, really cute game. It's super simple. Um, you have a restaurant and your goal is to get big in making pizza. Everyone's lives revolve around pizza. And when you first set up shop, you have a competitor but whose restaurant is across the street and he comes in to berate you immediately and he tries his best to pretend that your pizza is garbage when he thinks it's actually really good. The longer you play, the more money you make, the more stuff you can unlock, like toppings and stuff. There's all these cute little characters and ads are optional. The best thing about today is finding a game where ads are optional. Heyday, in its heyday, was a really good game. Now it has more ads, like everything else. It was a game I played a lot of. Me and my friends, we'd visit each other's farms, sell each other our goods. I make a crap ton of money selling like peas, I think it was, like sweet peas or sugarcane. And your goal is to expand your farm and grow it and fulfill more orders. It's kind of it. It was fun. It was a cool little one. The graphics are pretty cute. It's very Facebook-esque of its early days. Kingdom Rush, I played for hours. I highly recommend this game if you like strategic combat games. No ads, unless you want to watch ads. And it's got, I don't know, it's, I love the graphics and the style of this game. It's really cute in a way while not being cute at all. It's really cool. It looks very hand-drawn, which I love. The game progressively gets harder. It teaches you new mechanics, introduces new enemies, you get new heroes, unlocks, power-ups, things like that. It's really simple, super fun. Which also is like the Battle of Polytopia, a game I still play now. I spent two dollars on this game so that I could play online just to never play online, but it's kind of the same thing except it's turn-based, so it's very strategic combat, but per turn. The closest thing I could refer it to is probably D&D, &D, I guess, but if it was like about trying to destroy every other nation and make the whole world your own. <laughs> Monster Legends was also very Facebook-esque. I played that around the same time I played Heyday. It has the same kind of style graphics, except you raise monsters and you progress through all these battles and they get harder and you get better rewards, unlock new monsters, you eventually can like make hybrids and things like that and there's events and it's a really cute game. To be honest, I had a lot of fun with this one. I played lots, um, way too many hours, but there's not a whole lot to say there, it's simply that. I'm gonna pretty much skim through most of these mobile games as they're all very small, very straightforward. Clash of Clans was another one that was introduced to me by the older boys. So the way school buses around here were is that the older you are, the farther back in the bus you could sit. So when the high schoolers weren't there, we would all sit in the back and every single one of us would play Clash of Clans together without fail. Over time, I have still, I guess, played a little bit here and there. Uh, not a whole lot. It is pretty cool, pretty unique, very strategic. But the cool part is that you also have your own base that you're trying to upgrade and defend off attackers. And while people do that, while time passes, you can go and attack other people's bases and it brings in resources to help you build your own clan, essentially. Um, you can play solo or you can compete in tournaments, as a campaign, all sorts of things like that. Cooking Fever I started playing because an ad told me if I downloaded the game I would get this insanely overpowered oven that cooks everything instantly. And I did. And I did get that oven. And it was really fun until it got kind of boring because everything cooked instantly so there was really no point to playing. But the premise is that you serve orders and the more money you make, the more decorations you can throw out into your restaurant, the more food you can cook, and it... You know, you get the idea. Most of these games are pretty level progressive. The more you play, the more you can do. Which is the complete opposite for Slither.io. The same as Haper.io, Block.io, Hole.io. Like, it's normally a simple task. I played definitely all of those games, even if I had an ad every minute. But they're still a bit of fun. They didn't used to be packed with ads. Now most of them are. What's new? With Slither.io, I think I played the most. You're a worm, and you try to kill other worms, and eat these dots to get bigger, and that's it. It's a never-ending game, like every other .io game. Smashy Road is by the same people as Crossy Road, but instead, you drive a car, and your goal is to stay running away from the police as long as possible. The longer you're running away, the harder it gets, so it starts with one cop car, and then there's SWATs, and then there's tanks, and then there's more barricades, and helicopters. It was a 
really fun one, even though it can get repetitive, but it keeps you hooked in because every round you play, you get you collect money on the map and then buy new cars. And who doesn't love new cars? Blocky Roads was another game part of my off-brand Minecraft playing era where your farm gets destroyed by a tornado and your job is to drive around picking up gold to rebuild your farm. I actually had a lot of fun with this one, as the more you play, the more money you get, the more upgrades you get for your car to be able to travel further in these levels, and eventually you can unlock more vehicles. I definitely spent a lot of time in the vehicle customization section once you unlock that, building really bizarre, stupid looking cars, but it was fun. It was simple, and it was creative in its own way. Flip Diving was just another one of those games that the boys would play, and so I had to play it too. The same thing, like, there was a shark game, and there was definitely other games like it too. Nothing really happens, you just flip, and you try to last as long as possible. I already forget the name of this game, but you play as a ball and you dance through this course while bopping it to some sort of beat and literally, like, the second you die, I got an ad, so I'm clearly doing really well at this one now. Pretty sure we all had a Wattpad era in middle school. Um, so yes, I used to play stories. And anything like it. Not gonna talk about it. Neko Atsume is a game I still play now, and one that I've managed to get my entire family hooked on. I also now own the VR version, which I don't play a lot because it's kind of the same thing and I don't spend a lot of time in VR, but the premise is that it's a real world time game. So you put out food, cats come, they play with whatever toys you have out, they leave you fish, you buy more toys with the fish, and you try to collect all the cats. Don't Touch the Spikes was one that I found from one of my older sisters, and obviously that led to me playing every single catch-up game that was ever created. Um, spent way too much time in these games. Minimal ads, which is still good, um, but it was definitely a good time passer. All of them. The simplest way to explain Beat Star is that it's basically better piano tiles or Beat Saber for your thumbs. It collabs with various different artists to bring music to a piano tiles game that is actually good. It does contain some ads and you are limited unless you watch or pay. Uh, it is kind of generous with the gems if you play enough, which gives you the ability to purchase more songs, boxes, playtime, whatever. I actually played a lot of this game during high school because it was actually really good. So, many of you probably know what Pokemon Go is, and I will tell you now that I was there back in 2016 when this ca first came out. Didn't hop on the train intentionally, I just got a tablet one day and was like, hey, look at this Pokemon game I can play. I didn't fall off any cliffs, I didn't get robbed, nothing like that. I did go around markets, catching different Pokemon, finding whatever local gyms were having fights, I would always lose. It was a pretty cool game. I got my whole family hooked on it, completely by accident, but it does become rather repetitive after a while. It's just, I find that with a lot of mobile games. It was still a really good addition to the Pokemon franchise. Blockheads, I played a lot while I was 12. I specifically remember finding this game on my iPod 5 or something. I don't even know what it was anymore. And playing it a lot over Christmas while I was traveling away. And I don't know, it was just kind of an addictive game. It does take a lot of time and you do have to use gems to be able to speed things up, but what I found out recently while playing again is that you can have the app running in the background while you go on your phone and do other things, or do other things in general I guess, and it will still continue your tasks, and then when you go back on your game, everything's done. So it's not so bad if you play it in increments, I guess. It's, I don't know, it was still kind of cool. It's very heavily focused on, like, technology and stuff like that. Engineering, I guess? Kind of like a lot of the big fancy mod packs for Minecraft, but I was never really into that. I just wanted to build a nice house and live my little 2D Minecraft life. My Talking Tom. Probably one of the most infamous mobile games from when I was a kid, just because of the controversy and rumors that spread around it, where people thought that there was a person in his eyes that could see you. Who was gonna tell kids that your phone can see you all the time anyways? As well as, you know, your location? your passwords, your health stats, but nah, this this cat was apparently creepy. I was one of the few people that kind of didn't give a shit and just kept playing it anyways. I thought it was really fun and returning to it now, it's incredibly boring. For some reason, I was given infinite gems and gold, so I got to give him this really cool emo outfit. For some reason, I thought there was way more to do with this game, but it was just kind of like a simpler version of a cat simulator, I guess, of sorts. I don't know how else to put it. I know there was also a couple of others based off of Tom's friends, and I guess there's now videos and stuff on him too.
I could probably sit here all day and list off every mobile and web game that I played as a kid because it's such an expansive place. Anyone can upload free games to the internet, anyone can upload free games to app stores now, anyone can make them, that there's just too many. I'm gonna continue to remember more after this video is done. It's one of those things, like Mario Kart, dumb ways to die. I forgot Terraria, Terraria, however you pronounce it, and that was a huge game for me, but I think when I think of childhood games, I don't think of the good ones that I still play, I think of the really niche, weird ones. One thing I, I don't know how I completely forgot this, but I didn't talk at all about Five Nights at Freddy's. I feel like I don't have to. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I played many fan games, I played the main games, or you can look up someone who will try to explain the lore if you really want to go into that side of it. But those were huge games when I was a kid. I played them all when they first came out, and for some reason I just completely forgot about it. So that's that, I guess. I'm recording this outro for like the 10th time, whether it's using the webcam microphone or the quality coming out like crap because I have exposure set too high or something breaks and I know I'm sat in a really bad placement with the window being right here but it's the best I can do. I'm moving in a month so pray that I get the best setup I've ever had because I've had my computer set up in like five different spots, one of which includes my dining room. I used to stream in the same place I ate dinner. This isn't the point though, so I want to thank you all very much for your patience and for watching. Aside from moving, I also might be taking on a full-time job soon so I can put less time into YouTube, but I'm also going to put more time than I'm putting in right now. This video took me six weeks when I said it would take less than four, but I stressed myself so much over all the work I had to do for it that it caused me to take longer so I've spent some time writing out a business plan in hopes of organizing myself and my time and my content better. So if I have bigger videos that are taking longer, I will have little ones, shorter ones that I can put out in between, just so there's still stuff up. If you guys want gaming content, it's on Axel's side quest. I still love making gaming videos, still love editing them. It's honestly really fun for whatever reason. I'm looking at OBS and not at the camera. Thank you all for being patient and for watching. I hope this brought out a sense of nostalgia for you, and I hope you all have an amazing day, night, afternoon, whatever time it is, wherever you are. And I will see you guys next time. See ya!